Hello everybody and welcome back to the 1994 Biathlon Olympic season of 1994 as we have only three rounds remaining as we head over to the eighth round of the season. And looking over to our calendar, the eighth round of the season is in Germany at Oberhof. So, with Sven Fischer heading to his home race, can he maintain a very healthy lead in the men's championship? And can Svetlina Parajima of Belarus hold on to the lead in the women's competition? Let's get to those feature races and we'll find out. Okay, it is the 22nd to 5 second race here at Oberhof, so it is the first of two feature races. With the highest placed biathlete in 22nd being... Uh, Pierre Beto Carrara, who is starting 11th. The second highest placed by athlete is 23rd, is Visa Haitalati, starting 16th. And the third highest by athlete is Jen Steichen from Germany, who will be starting first, who is 24th overall. So Steichen, Cheprikov, and Velsepec on the front row. Who among them is going to win this race and who might get into the top 21 for the next round? Let's find out as we get underway here at Oberhof. And here we go, it is a very good start there, I believe, from Jens Steignan, with Cheprikop and Velsepec alongside him, who among them will take an early lead in this race. And it looks like it's going to be Cheprikov who's going to try and sneak into the lead of the race early on, of Cheprikov who is 36th overall, so the bottom half of the standings, well, in this group. The Jens Steignan takes an early lead of the race. First try, first side by four and a half seconds. No, I say that. We've got someone else who's gone into the lead of the race. I believe that is... Oh, it's Johnny Stilden from Norway. Although I say that, here comes Jens Steignan uh, coming back in again to try and take the lead of this race. And so making their way to the 2.2 kilometer mark. They've got a huge hill to climb. And so there they are climbing up now with the 2.2 kilometer mark at the top of the hill. And here they come, making their way through the 2.2 kilometer mark. With first the 21st separated now by 7.1 seconds of Thomas Koss at the back. Thomas Koss may not have the best ski pace, but his accuracy has been pretty decent. But here we go into the shooting range first. Who's going to their slot first? That'll be Pierre Beto Carrara with Dusea, Holbeck, Passa, and Alfred Aiden, the fifth fastest into the respective slots. Now, who's going to go clear here? Who's going to go clear? Is going to the penalty live. Steinhardt's missed target. Holbeck's missed target. Carrara, Dusea's missed a target. And you got Alfred Aiden have gone clear. Carrara's missed two. Dusea, three. Holbeck, three. Passa, one. Tildum, four. Dolny's gone clear. Garabek's gone clear. Yulkiev, Yurfel, Sepek, Anderson, and Koswin clear. So it is Dolny who leads the way uh, from Ukraine. Alfred Ader is second, Yurfel, Sepek third, Yulkiev fourth, and Petra Garabek rounding off your top five at the moment. Of course, Dolny is sitting 35th overall, just behind his teammate Roman Zvonkov. And I believe Svonkov went into the penalty list. I'm not sure where he is at the moment. Svonkov is 8th. Well, tying for 7th. 5.7 seconds down on his teammate at the moment. Alfred Ayer, second place. So only 1.1 seconds separating the two biathletes. Alfred Ayer, of course, is 26th overall, which I believe is the highest place he's reached so far this season. But the question is, will he go any further up the board? Um, with just two more races after this one. It's possible. Going to the 5.2 kilometer mark they go. Here comes Dolny through with Alfred Adria coming behind him. First try first, separate by 30 seconds going to the 4 kilometer mark. We've got a large group of athletes. Third down to seventh. As here comes Dolny and Ada into the shooting range for the second time this race. They're leading away. Now, how, how will they do here? Can they go clear again or will they go into the penalty loop? Here's Ivor Yulikiev going in in third place with Jens Steichen in fourth and Garbeck around to top five. Oh, two for two, three for three for Dolny, three for three for Ada. Dolny smith the target, Ada smith the target. So one penalty loop for them, one penalty loop for Yulikiev, three for Steichen. But the other Ukrainian, Roman, Roman Svonkov, goes clear. So did Anderson, Favre, Carrara and Koss. 
But it looks like Swankov is going to be to the lead. In fact, just ahead of his teammate, uh, Dolny, with Leif Anderson, uh, 32nd overall, taking third place. For Harvey's fourth, Ader goes into fifth, Yulikiv is sixth. So, as it stands, both Ukrainian athletes in this race are first and second, which is very, very good for them, especially when they're, uh, I believe, are the highest placed uh, Ukrainians in the men's championship, with the Ukrainian team having, i say, much better success in the women's side of the competition than the men's. But we've got two more races after this, so that, uh, that opinion may change. That's for sure, and it probably will change, knowing me, as they're making their way to the 8.2 kilometer mark as we are halfway into this race. And here we go, coming to the 8.2 kilometer mark. We should see Svonkov making his way through. There he is, goes through just ahead of his teammate Dolny. And this will be Alfred Ader third, Favre fourth, Leaf Anson fifth, Ivor Yulikiv, Carrara is the highest placed biathlete in seventh, Haitalati second highest biathlete in this group in eighth, then Garbeck and Thomas Koss rounds off your top ten. And here they go into the shooting range at first of two rounds of the standing shoot. What can happen here? Anything can happen. So here we go, the pressure is really tr truly on for the two Ukrainians. And Svonkov with a target. Two misses from Svonkov. The pressure's gone to him, it looks like. Uh, two penalty loops for Svonkov. One for Dolny. Two for Ada. Uh, one for Anderson. Three for Karaf. Three for Favre. However, Ivor Yulikiv goes clear, so he might end up taking the lead of this race. In fact, he does. Five minutes 42.2 is the time. He's ahead of Dolny by 3.2 seconds. Uh, Thomas Koth, Jura Felsepec and Jen Stagnan all went clear here. Donny second, Svonkov drops to 5th, Heitlati 3rd, Anderson 4th, Koth is 6th, Felsepec 7th, Adar, Stagnan and Garbeck rounds off your top 10. Further down, Hollebeck and Johnny Steeldom have gone clear for Czech Republic and Norway respectively. So Ivor Yuki has a 2.9 second lead over Donny at the moment, Heitlati 4.5 seconds down on Yulikiv. There's Anderson and Svonkov rounds off your top five at the moment. With only one more round of the of the sign shoot to go in this race. Can Yuli keep keep it together? If he if he wins this race, he'll most definitely uh, go higher than 30th. He's 30th overall. Leif Anderson is 32nd overall. And Haitalati is 23rd overall in third place. In fact, we see there's a battle, battle for second going in. Haitalati goes into second and goes ahead of Dolny. So here we go into the shooting range for the fourth and final time of this race. We've got quite a few groups up and down the field. That's for sure. So here we go into the shooting range. They go for the final time. Yulikiv is in first. Haitalati, then Dolny. Okay, the pressure's on all three of them to go clear. And here we go, Yulikiv one for one. One miss from Haitalati. A miss from uh, Dolny. Two misses from Haitalati. And Yulikiv goes clear. So Yulikiv most definitely going to win this race. Two penalty loops for Haitalati. One for Dolny. One for Svonkov. And none for Anderson because Anderson goes clear. Will anyone else go clear here? Thomas Koth doesn't. One penalty for both Slovenians here. Uh, looking for a down, Gareth has three, Holbeck two, Tildum two. In fact, we've got both Ukrainians in the top five, though. So that's so very good, uh, good showing for Ukraine, especially when they've been struggling in the men's competition, but in the women's, they've been doing pretty good. And here we go, Nine, nearly 10 seconds separating Anderson and Yulikiv. Dolny 10.1 seconds behind, Svonkov is 14.2 seconds out behind, and there's Haitalati in 5th ahead of Jen Steigden from Germany. And Karara, the highest placed biathlete in this race, down 7, so that's not good for him, especially when this could be his chance, could have been his chance to get back into the top 21 uh, in the ninth round of the season. And here is Ivor Yulikiv making his way past the 14.2 kilometer mark, which is 800 meters left to go. 
as he's making his way towards the finish line already. So a very, very quick race there for the Norwegian. The question is, who is going to finish in second possession? Will Anderson hold on to second, or will Donnelly make his way into second? As we can see them on the map, they're relatively close as they're coming away across the finish line. And if Donnelly goes to the second, Anderson third, Heitzlati beats Von Kopp for fourth place. We just got to wait for everyone else to make their way across the finish line. And here we go, all 21 biathletes have made their way across the finish line. And it is a pretty dominant win for either Yuli Keith with only one miss, but it won the race. Donnelly may have missed three, but he beat Leif Anderson who only missed one. Heitzlati is fourth, Rowan Von Kopp is fifth, Jen Stagdon is sixth, Pia Beto Carrara is seventh, Yervels Peck 8, Favre 9th, and round your top 10 is Alfred Ader. So the the, bath, the one by athlete that probably will be disappointed in the result is Pia Beto Carrara, as this would have been his chance to get back in the top 21, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the case for this race. But anyway, it's time for the 1st to 21st race. And here we go, it's the 1st to 21st race for the men's championship here at Oberhof, with the overall leader Sven Fischer starting in 6th position, with Patrice bailey Sands, who is 2nd overall starting in 11th, and Stefan Busso, who is 3rd overall, will be starting in 17th position. So it's Sasher, Gredler and Zingel on the front row. How, who is going to take the lead of the overall championship? Will Sven Fischer be able to hold his 1 minute advantage over Patrice bailey Sands? Let's get into this race and find out. And as we get underway, now! And as it looks like a pretty good start there, from, I believe, it is Sasharin who got to a pretty good start. Although saying that, it might actually be Gludwig Gredler got a better start. Oh, well, I see that Andre Singel has got ahead of everyone, so I can't make up my mind who got the best start. Well, I see that Gredler has got his uh, skis out just ahead, but Sasharin is going to take the lead uh, of the one kilometre mark. First, the 21st, separate by 3.7 seconds. First is a Belarusian, last is a Belarusian. Sasha at the front, rising cover at the back. As they're making their way to the 2.2 kilometer mark, they've got the big downhill and then it's the steep hill upwards. This will be Sasha who is leading overall. Looking out, we're looking out for Sven Fischer, the overall leader, as his quick ski, ski pace is going to put him towards the front. In fact, I think I see him coming, uh, making his way towards the front already. Here come the Basleys making their way through to the 2.2 kilometer mark. Uh, so Sven Fischer has gone and taken the lead of the race of, of Sashern. First to 21st, separated by 5.5 seconds now, as they're making their way to the shooting range for the first time this race. I'm pretty sure Sven Fischer is going to be first into his slot. Oh, actually, I say that. Drasher is first into his slot, and Butho is second. Okay, here we go. Who's going to go clear? Who's going into the penalty loop? Drasher, Bucho and Fisher have all missed a target each. Drasher has missed two, Butho has missed two. Actually, Butho has missed three, which is not a good start for him. Bailey Salas goes clear, while Sven Fisher has missed one target. Reisenkopf goes clear, Flandin goes clear, Rico goes clear, Wolfgang Prime is clear, Bjorn Dan and Paul Hooper all go clear. So Bailey Salas is out in front. Sven Fisher with only one penalty loop to deal with. So it's going to cost him some time, but uh, he's going to go come out in sixth place. He's only five and a half seconds down on the Frenchman. So Sven Fischer definitely got a bit of work to do to keep up, trying to stay over a minute ahead of Patrice bailey Sands in the overall championship. Mikro Gross is in second for Germany. Sven Fischer goes into third for Germany. Flandern and Bjorn Dam rounding off your top five. And so making a way, he's making his way to the 5.2 km mark, so it's done. So it's the downhill, and then it is the very steep uphill uh, just after that. With only two more rounds to go after this race, Patrice Bay Sands really needs to start taking big chunks of Sven Fischer's time to try and catch up to him because Sven Fischer is setting himself up in a very strong position to win the championship, being one minute and one second ahead of him. I believe Fischer is going to second. No, Rico Gross is in second. Sven Fischer is 4.9 seconds down. Decent amount of time, but Bailey is going to need much more than just 5 seconds taken off. It's going to probably be on the lines of like 30. So here we go. Patrice Bailey coming into the shooting range. This will be Rico Gross and Sven Fischer coming in as well. All eyes on Bailey and Fischer. See how they do here. 
the pressure as well and truly on Rico Gross miss a target two misses from Rico Gross and Patrice Baysons goes clear what about Sven Fisher? Sven Fisher also goes clear so the chase is well and truly on between them uh, meanwhile La uh, Flandern goes clear for France uh, Wolfgang Parner goes clear for Austria so 3.8 seconds is now the gap between Baysons and Sven Fisher with Flandern and Parner third and fourth from the top five well we don't know uh, further back, Drash of Butho, who had hard, horrendous starts this race, has gone clear. Sasharin has gone clear for Belarus as well. So, uh, where is Flandern actually? Flandern is 18th overall, so pretty much on the lower end of the first to 21st uh, ranking. So, not too far away from being dropped into the 22nd to 42nd race instead. But the gap between Fisher and Baysons is now 3.7 seconds, so 1 tenth of a second has been taken off the gap between them but Baysan has got to keep pushing just to make sure he stays ahead of the German because 1.1 1 .1 minute 1 second is a lot of time to make to to cut in three rounds and the gap is now 3.4 seconds between them uh, so we're going to see them coming into the shooting range for the third time the first of two rounds of the standing shoot Okay, so here we go. Here comes uh, Billy Sands and here comes Fisher. This is this could be this could be crucial for both of these biathletes. And underway, Billy Sands missed a target. Nagus no, not what the Frenchman needed. This is uh, two misses from Billy Sands. This is exactly what French Fisher needs. Can he go clear? He does go clear, and he's going to take a quite a chunky lead over Billy Sands. That is not what the Frenchman needed, and this could, and this could end up costing him dearly. Okay, Bainsons looks like it's, he is still going to come out in second place, I imagine. But Blood de Grenda goes clear for Austria. Reisenkopf, Lauren, and Tarasov goes clear as well. Ten, okay, he's to the 10 km mark. 5 minutes, 35.9 is Sven Fischer's time. So with only one more round of the shooting range to go, all he needs to do is just keep his cap, keep his cool, and just fire the last five shots, and then he should have a massive lead over Bailey Sands in the championship. The gap is 12.1 seconds between them, so that would probably put the gap up to about one minute 13 seconds, and that by that point that should it should be impossible for the Frenchman to catch him. Although when it comes to to the, uh, to the Olympic seasons. Anything is possible, so don't count Lauren uh, Bailey Sands out yet, even if he wasn't to win this race. Because Rui Fisher just needs one horrendously bad round to change everything. And here we go, coming into the shoot range for the fourth and final time in this race. Here comes Sven Fisher, so let's see what he can finish this race on. Will he finish on another five targets down? As we should see Baysons coming into the shooting range now. Here he is, he's coming in now. Okay, here goes Sven Fisher, getting underway now. Oh, he's missed a target. One miss from Sven Fisher. Two misses from Sven Fisher. Okay, so two penalty loops for, for Sven Fisher. Baysons just needs to go clear. And, and then hopefully he'll have the ski pace to, get to uh, outpace him. Whoa, one more target. Yes, Baysons does go clear. It's going to be quite close between them. Who is going to take the lead of this race? And Patrice Baysons will just about go into the lead of the race, but the gap is 1.7 seconds. A lot of athletes going into the penalty loop for the final round of this race. Uh, two, uh, two, two, lots of ones and twos. Rico Gross goes clear for Germany. Uh, three misses or oh, four misses from Alexander Popov. Popov, who is fourth in the standings. Well, that's good. That's uh, a, a disaster. There, Glimsel's missed three. Zingel's gone clear. Megarov has gone clear. Uh, the gap is now 1.2 seconds between Baysons and Sven Fischer. I mean, Sven Fischer doesn't need to pass Baysons because he'll still have roughly a one minute advantage. Over base sounds with just two rounds left to go. So making their way to the 14.2 kilometer mark. What can Patrice Base Sounds do here with 800 meters to go? He's gonna have to try and find some extra pace to try and stay ahead. With Sven Fisher has reduced the gap to nine tenths of a second, so it's really, really close between them. 
and we'll press the wrong button. Here they are coming towards the finish line. Patrice Bassons is going to win this race, but I imagine the gap is probably going to be 17, so my guess is. Okay, 8 tenths per second separating Sven Fischer. Sven Fischer still absolutely dominating in the championship standings as we wait for everyone else to make their way across the finish line. And here we go, all 21 Barfleets have made their way across the finish line. Patrice Bay-Sans wins this race with two misses, just 8 tenths of a second ahead of Sven Fischer. Ludwig Redlow finished in third, Howard Flanders in fourth, Ryzen Cup is fifth, Rico Gro sixth, Lawrence and Busso seventh and eighth, Tarasov ninth, and Zingel runs off the top ten. The two Barfleets will be very, very disappointed with the results. will be Stefan Busso, who finished in eighth position after a really bad start to... Uh, this to the uh, start of the race, and Alexander Popov, who is fourth overall but finishes dead last in this race, that will be very, very disappointing for him and for the Belarusian team, as this is going to cost them a lot of time in the nation's tables. But with that out of the way, it's time for the women's side of the competition before we go off to the point standings to confirm everything. And so, here we go our first of two feature races here at Oberhof. With the highest placed by athlete that's twice second being Defoska, who will be starting in 11th. Second highest to twice third is Joe Mill Smith, who will be starting 19th. Third highest is Luisa Noskova, who will be starting in 15th position. So it's Cobbler, Lampton, and Rubikova on the front row. Who's going to win this twice second to 40 second race? Let's get this race started and find out. And away we go. And it looks like a good start from Rubikova. I think she may have got an early lead already going up the hill. Yes, yes, it's, it's the check that's got a, a slight hit, a lead. But there's Cobbler and Lampinen still right behind her as they're making the way downhill. And Andrea Cobbler about to start make a pass on the check into the lead of the race. Of Cobbler, it's currently 40 seconds, she was, so she is the lowest placed biathlete in this group coming into this race and uh, she's already putting a challenge on um, the check of Rubikova. Now Rubikova meanwhile is sitting in 35th so really low, low place by athletes at the start at the front and battling hard at the front but Cobbler seems to have retaken the lead of this race. Uh, Defosca is currently sitting 12th being the highest place by athlete in this race in 22nd position as they come to the 2.2 kilometer mark, and here they come uh, past that mark. The couple of reads, Ritzova second, Rubiko third, Zerbalova is in fourth position. Of course, Naskova is the third, third highest place baffle here in 24th position. Here we go, coming into the shooting range for the first time in this race. Who's going to be the first baffle into the respective slot? It's Luisa Naskova from uh, Russia, who's third highest in this group in 24th. Okay, getting underway here. Noskova's missed the target. Uh, Zarbalova's missed the target. Newgrim's missed the target. Who's going to go clear here? Going to go clear. Uh, yeah, we've got Andre Cobbler's gone clear. Snutina's gone clear. Serpentine's gone clear. Lampin's gone clear. So we've got four Baffleys that have gone clear. So it's Andre Noskova. Oh, Cobbler, sorry. Andre uh, Cobbler, the lowest placed Baffley in this group, in the lead. Uh, Snatina is second, Lampton third, third Nasina from Ukraine is fourth, and it's Retsova round through top five ahead of Corinne Newgrit. And the last battle to complete uh, the first stream range is Ken Rim, who is 41st overall from Australia. Two minutes, nine seconds, point eight is Clubber's time, going past the four kilometre mark as she makes her way back up the hill. She has a 1.4 second lead of this, uh, Snatina, so Snatina is catching up to the Slovenian at a quite quick Great. Snitina is sitting 30th overall, so she's got the last spot in the top 30 in the standings. Uh, so making her way up the hill, coming up towards the 5.2 kilometer mark, there is Snitina closing in on Cobbler, trying to, uh, just buying her time when to make the pass on the Savinian. And here we go, coming to the 5.2 kilometer mark, four tenths per second separating the two biathletes. With Mari Lampinen, who is sitting 29th overall, is sitting in third position. Her third Nasina, who is in 27th overall. And here we go, coming to the second round of the shooting range is Cobbler against Snatina. Which one of those two is going to come out ahead? Tension is going to be quite. Uh, tension will be mounting on Snatina more than Cobbler because Cobbler is in the last spot 
to make it to the feature races. Cobbler's missed a target. Santina has missed one. In fact, Santina's missed two. That's not what she needed. Three misses from Santina. Disaster right there. Cobbler's only missed one. In fact, Santina's missed four targets. Uh, Mari Lampinen is going to go clear for Finland. Noskova goes clear for Russia. And for the down, Laurie Tavares goes clear for the United States. So Lampinen takes a 9 tenths of a second lead over Noskova. Uh, uh, Cobbler not too far behind in third position. Only two and a half seconds behind. So now they're seeing fourth. Kokajua now goes into fifth for Belarus. With Laurie Tavares sec in sixth position. Here comes Noskova to make way into the lead of the race of Noskova, sorry, trying to show why she's the third, uh, third highest placed biathlete in this group. Trying to make the pass on the finished biathlete. Of course, she'll be wanting to push hard to try and make her way into the first 21st races, so the top 21 biathletes. 17 and 4, of course, you're first, 6 for the 6. Defosca, the highest placed biathlete in this, in this group, in the 7th position, ahead of Laurie Tavares in 8th. Skolota in 9th, and Perman Makova running for the top 10 from Belarus. As the top three biathletes are making their way to the 8.2 kilometre mark. And here we go, wait for them to come past. There is Noskova coming past, there is Lampada coming past, and there is Cobbler coming past as well. And Noskova up to 2.2 seconds ahead of second place. That's a pretty good distance she's pulling here. This will definitely help her out in the championship, I'm sure. And here we go, coming to the third on the shooting range, can Noskova go clear and ensure that she maintains this lead she's got going on here between her and Lampinen? And here we go, Noskova getting underway. She's her first target. Two for two. Three for three. Ah, uh, she's missed one, so it's Lampinen and Cobbler. So Noskova's got one penalty loop, Lampinen's got two. And two penalty loops for Cobbler. Sub the senior Cockajoo have missed a target, at least a target each. But a lot of the bath leads are missing targets. Uh, Stefoska's missed one, Skolos missed three, Permacos missed two. Oh, Corinne Yuger from France is, has gone clear, so is Laurie Tavares. Five minutes, 33.1 is Noskova's time as she comes out of the penalty loop. She's got a huge lead of second place, which is now held by Sixthland, just ahead of Laurie Tavares from the United States. Lampinen goes down to fourth. So this is a great uh, distance that Noskova's got on the rest of the field. This is going to help her time out, respectively. And if any mistakes in the top 21 athletes make, well, she can definitely capitalise on it, I'm pretty sure. 12.4 seconds ahead of Sixthland in second place, and Neil Grit in third place for France. This is exactly what the Russian needs uh, to uh, at, least make, at least be top 22. Because she's got a good distance between her, Joe Mel Smith, and Tafoska. In fact, Joe Mel Smith is 15th overall in this race, so uh, Mel Smith has had has been having a really, really trying uh, day here at Oberhof. 11.2 kilometer mark, six minutes 33 is uh, the Russians' time, and she's coming into the shooting range for the fourth and final time this race. Can she finish this on a high? 12 and a half seconds is the gap between her and second place of Sikfeland. And here we go, Noskova into the shooting race she goes. All eyes will be on the Russian to finish on a high high note. If we got about a second coming into the shooting range, that'll be Sikfeland. And I think that it uh, is Corinne Newgrip from France. And Luisa Noskova. Oh, this is our last target. But I think even if the second and third place Bathley's go clear, Noskova will still take the lead. Corinne Newgrip missed the target. What about Sikfeland? Uh, Sikfeland goes clear for Norway, so she'll finish on a high note. Uh, well, relatively high note uh, for Norway to be second. In fact, where is the Norwegian in the standing? She is 31st overall, so she'll probably make the top 30. She is 6.1 seconds down on Noskova. And I, th and I think that's Corinne Yogurt going uh, into third position. Jo Melsmith does go clear, but she's really, really struggled this race, so her time uh, is going to be is going to take a massive hit in the standings, that's for sure. But she'll definitely lose uh, 23rd to Noskova, I'm pretty sure of that. By the way, Noskova, the gap is now 7.1 seconds between her and the Norwegian, with Corinne Yogurt with a huge gap in third position ahead of Kokajua. Ahead by nearly tw about 11 and a half seconds, I think. 
There's the Fosca fifth, some damage control needed. So the same story with Joe Mill Smith with how far ahead um, Noskova is in this race. We've had Noskova just about to come towards the finish line after a very, very dominant showing here. Here comes Luisa Noskova. Will win the 20 second to 40 second race here in Oberhof for the Women's Championship. And all we just gotta do is just wait for everyone to make their way across the finish line with a time of 8 minutes 40.6. And here we go, everyone has made their way across the finish line, so Luisa Nascova wins the race with three misses, ahead of sixth ones who also missed three race, three missed three targets. Karen Yeager going to take third, Kokaju in fourth, uh, the leading biathlete in this group of uh, Defosca in fifth, ahead of third Belova. Joe Mel Smith bounced back to finish in seventh, but it's still nearly half a minute behind Nascova. Then third in eighth, couple of ninth, and Parmakova rounding off your top ten. So after a pretty uh, dominant race from Skova, it's time to do the first and 21st race and then it's off to the point standings. And so here we go, it's the first 21st race with the overall leader being Svetlina Parajima who will be starting in the third position. Second place is Veronica Claudel who will be starting in the 16th place. And third overall is Petra Bell starting this race in ninth position. So it's Irina Sesnikova, Luzhbov Belikova and Svetlina Parajim on the front row. Who's going to win this first 21st race and who's going to hold on to the overall lead of the championship? Let's find out. Coming to this race, Svetlina Parajim is the only athlete to be just under 1 hour and 4 minutes. So she does have roughly a 20 sec 25 second advantage over second place for a Claudel. As I said, Parajim, it looks like she is already off to a flying start to pull away from the 20 other athletes right behind her as they make their way to the one kilometer mark. Seth Nikola is right there, so is Petra Bell. So, so we've got athletes who will not want to let her, let her get away that, that easily. First twice, first is 3.7 seconds, so relatively close gap after just one kilometer into this race. Now we're coming to the downhill section before the steep uphill, before we reach the 2.2 kilometer mark. And it looks like Parajima is going to be well up front going into the shoe range, but the question is, will Parajima's uh, accuracy keep her in line to hold on to the overall lead of the championship, or will she end up losing the lead like how Natalie Santa did, go the, into the race of the overall leader, but finish dead last in the first 21st race that plummeted her out of the top, well just about, or out of the top five. And here we go, into the shooting range we go, and Petra Bell and Ushi does the two athletes into the slots first ahead of Parajima. Now here we go, who is going to go clear, who is going into the penalty loop? Uh, Petra Bell smiths a target, Talanova smiths a couple of targets already, Ushi Dessel goes clear. Uh, Parajima goes clear. Anyone else going to go clear here? Well, Natalie Sands has four targets. Emmanuel Clark and Ash Harvey go clear. And finally, Belova has also gone clear for Ukraine. So here we go. Go to the first round of stream rage. Pa uh, Parajima is 1 minute 45 seconds ahead. No, 1 minute 45 seconds after the first round of stream rage. 1.3 seconds ahead of Ushi Dissel. Sorry, not 1 minute 45 seconds ahead of Ushi Dissel. Oh my goodness, that would be mental. Now, third place, who is that? That is Emmanuel Claritz from France, ahead of Ange Harvey in fourth place. Right your top five is Petra Bell. So we've got three of the five, uh, three of the uh, top five spots are German. So that's no wonder the Germans doing well in the nation's tables because of how consistent their team is, or relatively close to each other. Uh, Gray Petra M is 11th, uh, who's the, the last uh, German in this race. Uh, uh, but still, three of the top five, three or four of the top five, not bad. But anyway, come to the 5.2 kilometer mark. Charging leads. Ushi Dissel is in second position. Emmanuel Clark will be in third. 4.6 seconds is the gap between first and third. There's Ange Harvey and Petra Bell right in top five. Uh, they, and here we go. Coming into the stream range is Parajima and Ushi Dissel. Now, pressure on both of them. Ushi Dissel is currently seventh overall. Can she keep up with the Belarusian? And here we go, here it gains it underway. And Parajim has missed the target, this opens the door for Pet for Ushidessel to take the lead of the race. 
And Oshi Desu missed one, in fact Oshi Desu and Parajinus missed two times each. That means Emmanuel Clara has the door op wide open for her to take the lead. It looks like she is going to do so. Uh, Emmanuel Clara is 16th overall, so this will be a mate. This will be a really, really good result for her to get her way up the order. Uh, Shelbrand goes clear for Norway, and Brienne goes clear for uh, for France. Looking further down, Mikkel Pass goes clear. Now Mikkel Pass is in fifth overall, so she's struggling this race uh, evidently. As we come to the seven kilometer mark, we're about halfway into this race. Natalie Sands at the back goes clear, but Natalie Sands started the season off so well, but Coming to the second half, it's all gone really pear shaped for the for the sole Italian. So Clara has a nine second lead over Ange Harvey second, who's just barely ahead of Parajima. There's Ushi Desol Petra Bell round for your top five. So three of the four Germans still in the top five, and Brienne seventh, Claude Manuel Claude no, Claude eighth, Petrova ninth, Miko Pass around for your top ten at the moment. Coming to the eight point two kilometer mark. And it is, well, obviously still Emmanuel Clare to front uh, second place. If I got quite a tussle for second place, it's actually uh, got a large group uh, bound together. There's Ange Harvey and Parajima, Ushi Dissol. Uh, where is Petra Bell? Fifth position, Ambrian sixth, Shellbread. There's Ferroni Claudel. Now, Ferroni Claudel is eight, uh, second overall, and she's struggling eighth position. So that is, so she, so it looks like Parajima is going to still, in, is going to increase the gap between her and the French. Uh, Parison uh, at the end of the round as it stands. Emmanuel Clarence missed a target. Uh, two misses from Clare. That's opened the door for Ange Harvey and Parajima to, uh, uh, to sneak into the lead of the race. And Parajima goes clear and so is Ange Harvey. So is Ushi Dessel. So the chase is well and truly on. Petra Bell goes clear as well. So Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Clarence is going to drop down from first down to at least fifth. If I find out where Clara's going to come out, no, uh, sixth possession just behind her teammate for only Claudel. Uh, Claude went clear, Mika Pass went clear, Burlet went clear uh, for France. And uh, anyone else going to go clear? Doesn't not look like it. Parajima only had one second to lead over the three Germans uh, right behind her. Ishi Dessel, Harvey, and Petra Bell. Then it's Claudel, Clara, and Brienne from France. That meanwhile, further back, their teammate Grand Petra M's gone clear, but she's well behind her teammates. Miko Pass is in eighth possession at the moment, with Shellbread in ninth. Around your top ten, it is Barlet from France, and Barlet is seventeenth overall. So this would be a decent result for her, because she's definitely had some athletes right behind her in the overall standings. And here we go, we're coming to the 12.2 kilometer, 11.2 kilometer mark, sorry, and Ushi Dessel was thinking of making a move on the Belarusian, but she's backed out of it. Probably a wise decision, in case uh, she went, it would slow her down quite considerably, but here we go, they're coming into the shooting range for the fourth and final time, so Parajima against the three Germans, how, how will the Belarusian uh, uh, crack under the pressure, or will she guarantee that she will remain uh, first overall, Claude and Clara are coming in along with Brienne. So here we go. If she does miss a target, the pressure's got to her. And Parajima goes clear. And Harvey goes clear. Petra Bell and she does miss a target each. Claude and Clara and Brienne have missed at least one. So Parajima will definitely hold on to the, lead, the overall lead. And well, um, Claude. The second place overall missed the target into the penalty loop while teammates Clara and Brienne missed three. Miko Pass has gone clear, so Miko Pass get a decent finish. Um, but she probably would be expecting a bit more, especially or at least be closer to Parajima than she is in this race. But a big one if for a lot of the Bathleys there. For the Bathleys uh, for the back are struggling. Christian goes clear. Karakazova from Bulgaria. Belova missed. Uh, Miss for Ukraine's with three and four tires respectively, so not the not the finish that they that they were hoping to get in this first twenty first race. It might end up putting their top twenty one positions in jeopardy. And for the bags, that's the cover missed the last tar that's the last target. I believe she's the last by athlete to come out of the shooting range. Fourteen point two kilometer mark is Svetlina Parajima still out in front, and she's going to win this race ahead of Ash Harvey, but only only. Uh, about three seconds, so it's not exactly a dominant race for Parajima, but it was definitely a very, very dramatic way to end the end this race. 
So this power gym is going to win the, the first 21st race for the women's overhaul race. And Charlie, who's fourth overall, will finish in second, exactly three seconds behind. But that's definitely a good result for her. Then third place goes to Ushi Dissol. And fourth place for Petra Bell. And I believe this will be for only Claude that will finish fifth as we wait for everyone else to make their way across the finish line. And here we go, everyone has made their way across the finish line. So Parajima with only two misses wins this race ahead of Ange Harvey who only missed one target this race. There's Ushi Disso, Petra Bell, Roy Clonel, Mikkel Pass, Brienne, Shellbred, Emmanuel Cloud and Simone Grenier Petra M rounding off your top 10. But I think it'll be a very delightful result. It's definitely Parajima because she guarantees she's going to increase her lead in the championship. Those who will be disappointed will be Claudel, uh, probably Petra Bell, and, but definitely uh, Christensen who finished all the way down in 12th position and Christensen is 6th overall in the standings. But with that out of the way it is time to go to the standings and see where everyone uh, lays. As always it's time to kick off the men's championship standings and Sven Fischer has a 1 minute point three second lead over Patrice Bayesas in second place with Buffo and Popov heading on to third and fourth respectively. Lutter Grella makes his way to the top five ahead of Sylvester Glimstow with Lionel Lawrence overtaking Dracha for seventh place. Going down from 11th down to 20th, Karienko is 11th with Reisenkopf gaining 3 places to get to 12th position ahead of Mark Kirchner and Andrew Zingel who are 13th and 14th respectively. A good day for her, Flandern puts in the top 15 and a really bad day for Hannibal dropping him down to 17th position. And finally going down from 21st to 30th we have Vadim Sashurin in 21st ahead of Faith Haidtelati in 22nd position. We see Yulikiev had a very good stay to get to 27th and Leif Anderson makes his way into the top 30. Jumping over to the lowest side of the competition, Parajima holds onto the lead with Ange Harvey now making her way into second position, getting past Freud Claudel and Petra Bell, who are third and fourth respectively. Ushi Bell gains a position to get into sixth position ahead of Ellen Christensen, and Ambrian had a really good showing to get into the top ten, gaining four possessions. From 11th down to 20th, Bedard goes down to 11th with Bella Cooper dropping to 12th. Al Allen Shellbred goes into 13th, gaining two positions over Lynn Elbeck. And Cesar Cooper, who lost three positions to drop down to 15th place. Luisa Doskova getting into the top 20, gaining four positions. And finally, going from 21st down to 30th, Ivor Karakasova had a bad day to drop to 21st position, just ahead of her teammate Ekaterina Defoska in 22nd. Corinne Yogo had a good showing, gaining two positions to get to 23rd, but a really, really bad day for Nadja Belova dropping down to 25th position. And next, Sigfalid rounds off the top 30, gaining one position to finally make the top 30. Jumping over to the men's nation's table, and the only change is Ukraine makes their way into the top 10, with their average being over 10 minutes behind the leader of France, who now have a 52 second lead over Germany on average, and a massive gap down to Norway, nearly two and a half minutes separating the top three. Moving on to the women's nation's table and the top ten remain exactly the same. Germany are out in front with a 53 second advantage over Norway with France 1 minute 15.5 seconds on average behind Germany. Then a big gap to Russia over three minutes behind in fourth just ahead of Ukraine earning off the top five. Finally, at the mixed nations table, and the only change is Kazakhstan gained two positions to make their way into the top 10, just under 10 and a half minutes behind Germany on average, with Germany out in front with an 11.4 second average uh, advantage over France, with Norway over a minute behind in third, but they're well over a minute ahead of Italy, sitting in fourth. So I hope you enjoyed this round in Oberhof with two rounds left to go. Can Sven Fischer and can Svetlina Parajima hold on to the leads in their individual championships? Can Germany and France continue a brilliant uh, fight to win the nation's tables? Well, we'll jump over to find out. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you over there.